Oh, no, I'm just, it's because we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. And I'm going to nail Am it Am I tonight. playing Jeff's character? I guess we should just uh, transition. I have a little surprise for you. Okay. <laughs> just You just sit tight and let me play Dungeons and Dragons by myself. <laughs> <laughs> surprise! <laughs> Do I, I need my there. character sheet. Spencer, how are you tonight? I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> good. <laughs> this is engaging podcast talk. Thank you, <laughs> Sarcasmos. Or, Spencer, you look very healthy. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah, what? the first time that I, that's ever been said to me. In my life. <laughs> you look spry, and your cheeks are rosy. You look healthy. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm sorry, I'm, I'm possessed like by a dying Jewish woman, I guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right. To recap as quickly as possible, I am Sharpie Butts a lot. I am a uh, first-level wizard. I, uh, I have recently become uh, uh, friends with my uh, previous rival, uh, Quark, played by Jeff Davis. And we fought a, a giant piggy bank uh, and uh, beat it. <clears throat> and uh, then we got some treasure. And now... Uh, I, I, I refuse just because Jeff's not here to uh, not play the game. So, Spencer, tell me where I am and what's going on. Well, you're still in the cave, and after putting most of your treasure away, you notice a strange wooden box. For the podcast listeners, I have this physical box. Come and take it, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa. This wooden box is stained purple with engraved stars and celestial bodies on its surface. Oh my god, Spencer's proposing to Dan. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, Dan, it's been great on this podcast these past few weeks. <laughs> I hope this campaign never ends. I know we took it to the next level in our relationship last week with that hug. It, it meant a lot to me. Will you please level up with me forever <laughs> and become immortal? Uh, right, well, I, wait. So if I open it in real life, Spencer handed me a real box. This is Just a little like weird. Sharpie Buttslot found in his treasure. So if, if I open it in real life, I'm opening it in the game, right? Yeah, and if you open it in real life and it's a trap, you're going to die. Oh my God, someone, someone tape it. All right, well, I, I, I'm not, uh, not going to open it. Because I, I don't know if you know this about my character, but I'm a pussy. <laughs> I have a lot of anxiety. I, 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 uh, what, what happens if I cast Detect Magic on it? You detect a small trace of unearthly magic coming from inside the box, but inside the, box the box itself does not seem magical. All right. I examine it as much as I can for any kind of uh, mechanisms like, uh, you know, strings that lead to guns that are pointing at my face. <laughs> you look it over thoroughly and find that it doesn't appear to be trapped or mechanized in any way. I very carefully open the box. Opening the box very Opening carefully, box. you see a small stone inside. Holy I do. Shit. In real life, I do, too. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Oh, well, I, I touched the stone in real life, but I'm not doing that in the game. You can. I mean, it's well, not going to kill you. Oh, <laughs> all right. Maybe I just Spencer, gave you Spencer, I'm there. right here. <laughs> right here. Uh, what, what, what? Inside lay a small iridescent stone. Its surface shines in many colors and its shape is confusing, full of squared <laughs> spirals and tiny ridges. Yes. As you kind of like your relationship. <laughs> this, is, this is all a, uh, a, um, an integrated marketing campaign for uh, Spencer's girlfriend who owns a surf shop where she, <laughs> she makes shitty jewelry. <laughs> Go to Babette's Beads on Pacific Avenue. You find yourself enamored with this unique design, which can be ordered online. <laughs> it's called a quiggle. It's supposed to bring you luck in finance. Sorry. <laughs> Grasping the stone in your hand, you feel its surface warm up, and your surroundings fade to white, and you lose consciousness. What? The next thing you know, you're outside the trove again. The stone glows brightly, then fades to dimness. This must be the fragment of greatness that Derevan sent you for. Oh, that's right. The scryer who sent me and my friend Quark to the, uh, to the trove said that there was a fragment of greatness. I found the... So I, I, did, I re, did you say I teleported? Yeah. When you, you, you lost consciousness, and when you came to, you were outside the trove. And it wasn't anxiety. <laughs> it it might have been. All right. 
but I teleported, so that Sharpie doesn't happen. Sharpie has his demons. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'm done with that uh, trove, so I'm 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 going back to town. All right. The road back to Thornvale is wrong. Well, is long, but you are confident after finding the fragment of greatness. You see the familiar green rows of fields surrounding Thornvale, and it fills you with a sense of comfort and calm. It's true. On your left, you see a stables, and just past it, the local tavern. Now, I, I didn't come up with a tavern name. I thought the audience might want to name the tavern, maybe. All right. What's your name, sir? David. Uh, uh, what? Uh, what do you, Mad Lib style. Do you, do you want to name a tavern? Uh, sure. Take your time. I'm gonna make a drink, and we can edit out the pause. So just take your time. You're not, you're not under any pressure to be as magnificently witty and 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 quick as I have been tonight. <laughs> you can, you can, you can take. Just listen to this music and think of a tavern name. Aaron, you can talk about pantyhose or something. Well, ah, uh, pantyhose. <laughs> For times when you feel like your legs are a little too pale, or for when you are dating someone who says that he likes pantyhose. <laughs> pantyhose. Uh, for ladies who want to feel like Sigourney Weaver in the 80s. But have varicose veins. Right. Pantyhose. For when you have a meeting in the morning and a burglary at night. <laughs> Pantyhose. <laughs> For the record, All right. I wore tights and pantyhose before we dated. I know. important to me. I know. Yeah. I know you know. <laughs> this isn't awkward at all. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, yeah. What do you, what do you think I, I liked you? Because my, my, Cause of your my insecure brain. Ugh. All right. I love you. I love you, too. Thank you for taking my anxiety attack away at the San Diego Zoo. Well, I, I care about you. I want you to feel better. Oh. Well, what was your name again? <laughs> David. All right. David, what's the tavern name? Cha-Cha's Tavern. <laughs> Cha-Cha's Tavern. All right. I think that's in Silver Lake, isn't it? <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a tavern in Silver Lake. It's a bar. Cha-Cha's Tavern. Cha-Cha's Tavern. The tavern is a welcoming place. It has a large lounge with polished tables and a puffy chairs and a long bar. Several humans, gnomes, elves, and halflings are mingling, and a gnome is standing on the counter pouring steins of beer from a large keg. I assume that Quark and I kind of, uh... We went into Quark's town a bit tired out after his rage. He's yeah. not saying much. He's kind of... Oh, is he with me? Yeah, he's just hanging out. Oh, okay. Hey, Quark... He's doing a uh, show in Chicago, right? Well, why don't we get a... Why don't we get a... I'm, I'm going to go... I'm going to talk to the uh, tavern keep about getting a room. Do they have rooms to let at this tavern? Yeah, this tavern has an upper floor with some rooms. Yeah. All right. All right. So you, you head up to the to the tavern keeper. Yeah, he's this gnome standing on the counter. His name is Cha Cha. All right, he's the bartender and the keeper of the tavern. He's a white haired gnome with thin beard, and he says he sees you coming up, and he's like, "What'll you drink?" <laughs> I'll have a flagon of ale. A flagon of ale? That'll be three copper. Oh, all right. What a bargain at twice the price, methinks. Uh, what say you for two rooms, a tuppence or a shilling for a wainscoting? I could part with two rooms for only three silvers. All right. Here's, I assume I have three silvers. Actually, you only got gold pieces from the treasure. You don't even... I'm so sorry. They hate gold. I'm very sorry. It was an accident. It was an accident. Erin just put her elbow on on her soundboard iPad app. I thought it was a boing. It doesn't, it makes, it doesn't make as much. <laughs> no, I thought that was a hooray. Sorry. It's it's mixed pretty high, Nespa. Like, 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 like for all right. Uh, Here, here's a gold piece. Keep the change. Oh wow, a high roll, eh? Are you an adventurer? <laughs> yes, yes, and I'm new to Maine. <laughs> I've never been in the uh, uh, the lighthouse district. Um, 
I, yes, I'm, a, I'm an adventurer, and uh, I'd like to I'd like to make sure our rooms are uh, particularly safe. So keep the change in exchange for your constant vigilance. Much obliged, sir. But have you seen this? He motions to a poster on the wall. It's a wanted poster. It says "Wanted, the Ember Mauler." There's a picture that looks like a lion with a flaming mane and some two tails. It's made with pastel crayons. There you go. That's good. <laughs> this char- the charred, dismembered corpses of cats, dogs, and most recently a Thornvale mare have been found, and reports of a black burnt crops have been made in the fields. Thirty silver pieces for any information on this beast, or fourteen hundred gold pieces for its head. Hmm. Interesting. Thanks for the tip. As you read the sign, you notice someone seems to be staring at you and wa- seeing you look at the sign. Am I noticing them peripherally? You just feel the sense of being watched. I look at them. <laughs> <laughs> you see a tall, thin... Is it an elf? No, it's a half-elf. Stand- Loved by all. Loved by all. <laughs> Standing with a bow and a sheathed sword in the corner of the room. He seems to be interested in your looking at the poster. Hmm. All right, so for the podcast listeners, this is Aaron's character. Yes, <laughs> God damn it. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a sheet. Thank you. Uh, how could this go wrong? Good morrow, Sir Butzalot. <laughs> You Marks know, a lot, Sharpie. You know my name. I have heard of you. Uh, you have me at a disadvantage, Mr. Uh... Sedana. Mulrain. <laughs> <laughs> May I, I bow to you? <laughs> I can't stop you. <laughs> Well, regard me bowing, for it is a great honor to be to witness the bow of an elf human. <laughs> bow. <laughs> I'm also a ranger. Your, your bow is so loud. And <laughs> I will. I have put on my loud robes today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tell me what you know of this lion. I know that I just started looking at it on a sign. <laughs> And that then you started staring at me. <laughs> and that now you say you know me and are bowing loudly. <laughs> that you and I are on the same page now across the board. We are all caught up. <laughs> well, I could sense your energy across the room, dear sir. I feel like you and I shall be friends forever and I shall be involved in every adventure that you have from here on out. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, well, Regard my bow. Oh, it's so cloying and, <laughs> and <laughs> invasive. <laughs> like its owner. May I join your team? What's that? May I join your team? I recognize that you and your lover are on a long journey. All right, hold on a second. <laughs> I just want to stop you there. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, we met in the Howling Mines. It seems uh, that his face is at dick height, yes? <laughs> uh, I don't a- wish to be disrespectful, sir. <laughs> yeah. Only understanding. Can I inquire as to your specialties, what you're bringing to the table? Should we go on an adventure together? For now, I shall let you know one of, one of my special abilities. For I am full of mystery, and that makes people like me more. I am immune to sleep. (laughs) Ha ha! Ha ha! Let us adventure! (laughs) Do you like cookies? I also have cookies. That's not... That's okay, right? You got cookies, Having cookies. Uh, Yeah, I I, I like the cut of your uh, jib. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I think that... I just have to make sure that you're not going to murder us in our sleep. Oh, of course not, sir. I have never been known to murder. In fact, I'm kneeling. I'm taking my hand and I'm crossing it across my chest. Sir, all of the Sedanas have been onerous since the beginning. We existed with the dinosaurs. (laughs) 
and the fungi and the rocks and the storms. We have always been here bringing goodness to the world and no harm has been inflicted on part, on part, by in part. We haven't done anything wrong. I accept your oath. I, I grew up in a family without honor and I appreciate people who have it. I, I've always dreamed of being part of a family that had some kind of uh, tether to the realm of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of good things. Aye, aye. We'll speak no more. Adventure! Yes. <laughs> let's, let's bound out of the tavern and into adventure while my gnome friend sleeps. If you would like to be alone with your sleeping gnome friend, hey, I understand. Listen. listen, man. You got the wrong idea about that. Like, I barely know the guy. We go on adventures together. Okay? And I'm not saying there'd be anything wrong with it if we were partners in that sense. I'm just saying it's not the way it is. You got the wrong idea, man. As the earth is un- unashamed of his rivers... <laughs> Honesty is like water. Let your water flow and be happy. (laughs) Adventure! (laughs) All right. Well, I feel like an adventure would take too long at this point. I've come a long way, uh, and we need to sleep. Fine. Well, I am immune to sleep, so uh, enjoy your sleep. I shall dance and plan and dream and sing. (laughs) Are you staying here in the tavern? Yes, I am not leaving you. (laughs) Ever. I am part of this. (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! I should go up to Quirk's room and ask him if he's willing to uh, uh, have uh, a... Solomon uh, Goldberg, what's your name? Quite all right. Moraine Sedana. You head up the stairs to Quark's room. You open the door. Quark is trying to get to sleep, but he hasn't quite got to sleep. (laughs) He seems kind of bothered. I I nudge him gently. Ah, what? Quark, this is Solana Gomez. Just want to get the quick verification that she will be involved permanently in all our adventures forever. Well, does she have a bow? <laughs> Do I have a bow? Does the earth have dirt? Do the oceans have water? <laughs> yes, I have a bow! Adventure! <laughs> will you guys let me sleep? Yes, I know that you're metaphorically out of town <laughs> by being in bed. And your butt is full of cum. <laughs> That's, that's not true. I don't know where you got that impression. There's a, this is a, a, a giant m- mythical planet full of people traveling in all kinds of combinations. This isn't the first time two dudes have hung out together. Why do you keep... I, your fixation is making me think that there's shit up with you. When you're ready, you'll be ready. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, then we all go to sleep for the night. Do, 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 you, do you have a room, S- Sadama uh, Hussein? <laughs> Uh, Moraine Sedana. Yes, I have my room. Uh, okay. My room is the forest. I, I uh, go. Okay, go to sleep in the woods, and uh, we'll, we'll. I am immune to sleep. Let's, for I will. So I will shit. walk the woods. It's let's, quite all right, sir. Let's meet at six in the lobby. <laughs> all right. Yes. Okay, Spencer. Everybody. Thank Spencer. Dragon. Thank you, Spencer.